Tice. I'm the executive director here at Studio Channel Islands, and it's great to see you all here for one of our more ambitious and um, esoteric evenings. So I'm going to hand over now to um, Alana, who's going to introduce Maria and then move us through the evening's events. Thank you so much for, um, for being here for this evening. Um, first, I want to thank Peter and Jamie, who do everything around here, and I mean sort of everything <laughs> outside of our volunteers, um, to make this possible, this exhibit, and even this evening. And how many people have experienced a live performance in the audience? Nice. So you're definitely in for a treat, and this is a rarity. As a matter of fact, this is the first time Maria Adela will be performing in Ventura County, although she's lived here for 22 years. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> about time. So we'll get a little deeper into that. Um, here's how the evening is going to go. So we're going to start with a conversation. Maria Della will share some videos of past performances. She'll also share videos from a couple of artists, colleagues. And then we'll have a little break for refreshments and the party will start. <laughs> there will be a, uh, an opportunity for Q&A uh, after the presentation just for a few minutes. So something to keep in mind. So. First, I'd love to read a little bio to introduce Maria Della Diaz. So, she is a multidisciplinary artist born in Guatemala. She uses her body as a medium to convey the ramifications of deceptive politics, patriarchy, immigration, and discriminatory philosophies. With performance installations and video, her work addresses issues that deal with the Latin American diaspora. She's participated in many art exhibitions and venues around the world, including the Pompidou in Paris, Ex Teresa Arte Actual in Mexico City, Museum of Contemporary Art, San Jose, Costa Rica, Somerset House, London, and also locally at the LA County Museum of Art, among others. Her feminist work inhabits the boundaries between visibility and invisibility, exploring the absence of women's voices from the history of art and from society in general. Struggle is a consistent theme in her work, illustrating the intercultural battles that she has faced as an immigrant. Her work invites audiences to understand displacement from a common perspective, the search for a safe environment and equality. Diaz's dia diasporic artwork gives a personal context to the global crisis of conflict and displacement. And without further ado, I'd love to hand it over to Maria Della Diaz. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I just want to say, uh, I just want to say thank you to Elena and the studios and everybody here tonight. Uh, this is a great opportunity for me like Alana said, I've been here for 22 years and um, barely exposed my work in, in Ventura County. Um, so I've been showing my work uh, abroad, um, but this is a, a great um, space and uh, I'm so happy to be here tonight. Thank you. So maybe you could tell us about the medium that you use, which may not be familiar to some people in the audience. So maybe you could tell us a little about performance art and the subjects in your work. Yeah, um, mainly I, um, I come from, um, or I think about mainly the social issues that they're around the world. Uh, and my concerns as an artist, as, an, as a feminist, uh, also artist. Uh, I take those and I create work, work from, from that. Um, and with, perform with performance art, I have to exp use my body to experience and to have others experience that um, um, idea of like what it is to have your, your body involved and how 
also showing how vulnerable we are, we all are. Um, so I really come from uh, Guatemala, which is a really violent uh, country, and my perspectives uh, for, um, you know, for working with, with a violent, really violent against also um, women, when women are oppressed. Uh, so that's how really I start working um, on performance with my body to have that experience through pretty much to solve also part of the trauma that comes from that. Thank you. I would love to ask how, what inspired you to, to get started? Yeah, so I started working on a uh, performance mainly through poetry. Poetry. I was writing poetry uh, and I was really young. Uh, but also in that time in Guatemala, there was really a lot of conflict. Like I said, we uh, experienced 36 years of civil war. And um, at that time, even though my generation of artists that we work on that time wasn't involved in the war, but we were like the after the generation after that. And I think that put me through um, the need to really use my body and go to the streets uh, in Guatemala City and actually start working on the space that all the violence happened. Um, so my very first performance, yeah, this is, uh, uh, that happened in 1999. Um, is my very first performance where uh, I was writing poetry and I decided to go to uh, in the Central Park where the presidential house is and the cathedral, the cathedral um, church is. Um, and I decided to start and pu publish my first uh, poetry book, but I didn't want to do it at first, I didn't have a budget to do anything. Uh, and second of all, I wanted to use my body and also have that experience with people on the streets. So I got myself into a, a sewer with my uh, typewriter and I started writing my, my poems uh, and tied them on a, on a rope. So uh, people were like fishing those poems and they start actually reading them out loud, which was something that I didn't expect. Uh, but it was a beautiful experience. Um, and by being my first performance, then I go, well, you know, this is a really powerful tool that I can use my body, my uh, be having a personal uh, experience uh, with the public, and um, this, this is the result. Um, so coming from the late 90s, I also have to say that um, the doc documentation for these performances were not videotaped at that time because uh, first there was no, I, was, I didn't have access to that. So uh, the photos that you see are like film photos, <laughs> uh, but that's the documentation there. Um, and the, the, also the, the content of the poems were, uh, were really political and really uh, about um, how oppression and, and because I come from a patriarchal country where oppressed women and marginalized women. Uh, so I was against that obviously as a feminist. And um, so that was my motivation for that specific um, piece. Can I show that next one? Yeah. Uh, this is another performance that actually happened also on the streets, but it was part of a performance, no, not performance festival, an art festival in Guatemala. Um, and so I got myself into this plexiglass uh, box with uh, 3,000 uh, male flies. Um, the, the Mediterranean flies were raised to eradicate women, um, the, the female flies. Uh, so I thought, and the, the name of the piece is Ambros, Ambrosia, which is, uh, it means the food for God. 
um, for God's right. Um, so my intention was to really talk about how women are also seen as food and also as um, excrement or as like you know not a, a good part of it. Um, like no, no, sorry, I'm not here. That's the right word to say. So sometimes my English gets in the my Spanish gets in the, in the way. <laughs> But uh, what a, so I was there with a white uh, dress being invaded by over 3,000 flies. Um, the performance lasts like an hour and a half. Uh, and because I was in the public space, you'll see you know, people get around it. And also um, part of my, my theme and what I wanted to say is that all the violence that's against you know, women uh, were also part of the, the genocide that happened in Guatemala through the government. Uh, so there was a lot of death um, going on in those years before the before we signed the, the peace um, agreement. So I think part of what I'm hearing is that it's really an intervention that it's the nature of this art form, that it's an intervention in the public space, and it's a protest, it's a form of protest, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. What's amazing about it is that you're putting yourself in these situations that are very difficult, maybe painful. Yeah, I think that it was kind of like the, the need of that, you know, of that performance also to kind of like, again, um, transform the trauma into something else. Uh, also, the viewers, my interest also was that the viewers were from the street, people that didn't have that much access to art, uh, because those were the people who were actually suffering and, you know, seeing uh, like the news every day about, you know, all the death and killing. And um, in Guatemala, I think now, uh, 250 women are uh, killed every, every year. And some and some year in those years, I think there was more, but um, so mainly through my experience, my own experience, and also having people to really see what was happening in a different way and more a poetic way. Uh, I think it was a, my way to transform reality at that time. Uh, this is another performance that I did, um, again, in the same spot, which is where the Central Park of Guatemala is, where the government lives next to it, and the cathedral, uh, the religious part is in, in the same spot. Uh, Guatemala, like I said, had 36 years of civil war, and in 1996, uh, we signed the, the peace agreement. Um, but for me, it was like uh, ironic, you know, that we signed that agreement and that we were supposed to have any more killing of blood or any uh, violence. Uh, but it was the worst times in Guatemala at that time. <clears throat> so the day that we celebrated, it was a big holiday about celebrating the day of the peace. So I decided to stand up on, um, you know, sit, sit down on the chair, like I was giving birth to um, 13 uh, doves that I actually colored, uh, and they were alive, and so I was literally giving uh, birth to them, and they were flying, and they were invading the space. So part of it is also this uh, public intervention without being so aggressive, but telling, you know, there's blood everywhere. And the, the, this dogs is a symbol of uh, peace, right? Um, being tinted with, with blood, uh, running around, I mean, flying and interacting with the people. Um, I don't know, it was a, a beautiful thing for me to, also as a woman, to, to give birth to literally a dead um, idea. Yeah. 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 
which everyone is asking for that action. Yeah, absolutely. I think part of the, the work that I do is also transformation of the violence. Um, and, and again, in more a political, a political way to, to say um, this is happening. But also, uh, I think by, by doing performance, my, my also intention is to create questions, to ask so people from the streets that don't know much about art can question mm -hmm. and ask themselves, what is this? I mean, can we, what, what's going on with that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do you have any other stories that you wanted to share before we continue? Uh, no, I think this is it. For the, well, this is the, the, the work that I actually that I did in Guatemala, right? In those late 90s. Um, I have several more works, but I just wanted to pick these ones because they were like the ones that speak more to uh, what I'm interested in, which is political issues and, and gender um, issues as well. So. So you said you had come to the U.S. You came to the U.S. in 2001 with a young daughter. How did your work change? Yeah, uh, so I started in Guatemala doing mainly public art, as you see uh, in this pieces where I was pretty much, it was my territory. It was my place to, to go, and I didn't have to ask permission to any of those spaces. I would just go and and do my performance, and uh, and sometimes also the media was chlorine because they didn't know what's going on. It was mainly like a happening. It was not announced and anything like that. So uh, when I migrated here, my work changed definitely because I didn't feel like the space, uh, the public space especially, uh, was mine or I belonged to it. So I, I literally was doing uh, more intimate work. Uh, I didn't think that I was allowed to use the public spaces because also my migration situation, um, I was, there's a lot of things that come with migrating. You know, it's a lot of fear. Uh, it's a lot of um, uncertainty, you know, that what's gonna happen. So I think in Guatemala, I was more secure about what to expect. Uh, but here, I started doing more video performances in more intimate places, also in the public spaces, but they were hidden. There was not really a public, and uh, there was no, you know, like um, an audience um, like before. It was just mainly the camera, and a few people helping me to document the performances. So it really changed because of that, because I didn't feel uh, enough, uh, you know, like this is not my territory. Um, so that definitely changed the thought. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, so that's when you began really working with video, yeah? Yes, uh, I did a couple of videos, or I didn't have that much access to video in Guatemala, but I was recorded, and I, I, until now, I don't know who, who has the recordings, so it's kind of sad, too, that um, in that time when I started, I just really wanted to go out there and protest and do the work. I didn't think about the documentation as much, you know? So that's why I have a, this, this a few good photos mm, that I can save, right? Um, but when I came here, then I decided that I have to keep talking about this, talking about the social political issues and um, women, um, all that. And I just said, well, I have to do with the camera. I'm gonna have to do it with the camera. And I did video performances. Um, and as you can go to the next uh, video, you, you're gonna see a video. Um.
So Borderline is uh, one of the first uh, videos that I created here, and it speaks to uh, the state of migration and um, how unstable the territory can be. And um, I think being an immigrant and uh, so also a lot of people that goes through that also um, might feel that it's um, nothing really stable. We, we can be like in sun, you know, like it's sun, right? Um, big sand, sorry. <laughs> um, and uh, this is mainly the representation of that that moment in life that I also was myself, but I think uh, other people go through that. And um, again, I think it's one of my, my points to, I'm a, being an artist is my job to point that out. Um, and so I was literally inside that box, navigating and through the ocean back and forth until I got really sick and I was like really nauseous and um, I was really uh, cathartic in a way, like thinking about really uh, questioning why I migrated and why I'm here and asking questions uh, to myself. Um, because I feel like uh, people has this um, dream to come here, but they don't really know uh, what is in the other side, like what is to expect. Um, and uh, because in my work also, I wanna trigger some emotions and uh, some feelings of, you know, and I think this, this piece kind of talks to this unst unstable territory. Yeah, and also the isolation. Mm -hmm. and the the unknowing and the danger. Absolutely, and, yeah. Yeah, I mean, just the, the total instability. Yeah, and uh, the, the box also had uh, the name of the piece, but also my my alien number, right? Uh, which if I was maybe caught because I just did it on a public space, uh, probably the police would have just get me and send me back or something. It was really a threat. I think I did um, for just to go <laughs> to go through that, you know, time in my life. And, but it, but also it's my my work. I won't say that is biograph uh, biographical, but um, I do take that as a starting point, and also I do a lot of research about you know the the other the. the to what's happening in the world at the moment. Would you like to show us the next video? Yeah. I was invited to participate in this performance uh, festival in Venezuela. Um, uh, there was many artists from around the world invited, 
by the government, uh, which is a little bit ironic as well. Um, Cesar Chavez was inviting artists from around the world uh, with uh, paid uh, tickets and paid, uh, you know, everything to go and perform. And um, I created this piece because um, Venezuela has the highest um, human trafficking and um, you know, female trafficking for sexual, um, sex, sex trafficking, yeah, sex trafficking. Uh, is one of the highest in uh, Latin America. So um, my piece was a collaboratory uh, piece where I, uh, I did an open call, but 50 women participated, they were all dressed the same, and they were planted by men uh, with this idea of like, um, you know, having the women who creates life also to be reproduced instead of being um, extended, right, like, or killed, like, uh, or used as objects. So um, the performance took place in the city, uh, right in the city in Venezuela, uh, where they have this communal community of uh, garden communal. And so the people also from the city was able to look at this garden full of women planted by man, um, kind of surrealistic idea of having, you know, the city, the buildings, and everything. Um, How long were you there? Like 45 minutes. 45 minutes. And also, with the participants, it was really interesting because they were really grateful to be part of this, because they knew also there was an issue, you know, a problem like in, in Venezuela, so uh, they were really um, color collaborative, and um, it was really inspiring for them to to work uh, with all these women. Um, it's really interesting to um, consider like fertility and planting, and like the idea of staying in place. This image of a woman or a young woman, like the objectification and the exactly yeah and and being planted by men also mean a lot to me because they were the mainly you know and, and also patriarchal societies that they're the ones that attack women or you know extend the women or like make it, you know violate uh, their bodies uh, so for me it was like a statement of like no we are here and we are um, alive and you can keep being part of, you know, the, the world or the earth. Or... Uh, my performance itself, I didn't participate, I was like being on the planet, but my performance to thank them for participating was, I, wa I washed their feet, um, all of the 50 women. I cleaned their feet and washed them. Um, and put their shoes and everything as a um, symbol of gratitude. Almost like a blessing. A blessing by the artist. Yeah, I was, I was also happy to, to do that. It was like a really, I don't know, it came from, from my heart to do that. Beautiful, thank you. In Transit uh, was a performance that I did in Croatia. Uh, I was again invited to participate um, on a festival for performance um, art. And um, first when they invite you, they don't really, they didn't have a theme at all, but they said, you know, um, we want you to produce a piece for, for Croatia. And so I, um, <clears throat> I did my research and um, I found out that in Croatia uh, they don't allow or it's, that it's restricted to have immigrants moving into the city. So uh, they try as really hard to not get any immigrants 
or they cannot stay longer. So um, it was like a hard work for me to find five immigrants that were um, either illegally or like um, hidden in a way. Uh, so to create this performance, um, I wanted to have this boat uh, to kind of reflect on the refugee uh, issue that there is in Europe, and especially in Croatia and mainly Europe, they try to to hide that. They try to say no. I mean, we're fine. This is not not happening in this in this country. There's no no such a thing. And um, I wanted to really put you know like dig more about it. And um, we got this boat and. Uh, I have five people, including me, uh, sitting still, laying still for four hours. Um, and people, uh, the public, it was just a normal, regular public, and a few people that were invited for the performance. But uh, the viewer was on over the bridge, so they were looking down to the to this boat full of people, and they, they were wondering if they're dead or they're alive or what's going on. Um, and so that was mainly my intention to, to really open their eyes, you know, because they were in denial of, uh, no, we don't have refugees, nothing is happening. And also the spot where I picked to be, um, to have this public intervention, I would say, uh, was in the Drava River which uh, the Drava River is uh, located in Central Europe, which connects um, all the cities from Slovenia to um, Austria. Um, and so before, like years, years ago, um, it was a, um, the river was actually a, uh, communicator there was a lot of commerce going on and the, there was no restrictions for anybody to cross those borders um, as it is now right so uh, for me it was kind of like a really important location to create this piece um, also you know just randomly they that was on the news the next day uh, probably not random. <laughs> people were like, uh, people were really uh, upset. People were really wondering what was going on. Or people were crying. I mean, there was uh, a lot of emotions in that public um, at that time. Thank you.
La Carga is um, a piece that I um, work um, with my own uh, daughter. Uh, it was a performance piece where um, I really showed the struggle of a woman, um, <clears throat> mainly single parents, uh, you know, carrying uh, all the load of a, um, a child in, in this isolated environment. And that um, <clears throat> really was inspired to by the stories that I also heard about people crossing the borders with uh, their own child, risking their own lives, going to all this. And I really wanted to create this piece, um, also part of biographical, but uh, in a way I know that so many uh, women come here by themselves with their children, risking their lives. Um, and also uh, having this environment of isolation and um, like a um, hostile, as well as the hostile, um, you know, environment and stuff. So um, also talks about um, how women may in Latin America um, are left with their children. Uh, some men are not really responsible to be parents, I guess. Um, and so part of that is like all these things that we are uh, able to do as women and how can we, uh, it, you know, go through life uh, doing, doing that. Um, and it's expected from us to carry on. And the, the meaning of La Carga, yeah, la carga. When English, it means the load, the like load, load, the load, load, like the weight that you carry and um, manifest. Yeah. So, so those are the videos by Maria Adele that we're going to be watching this evening. So let us. I have more words. <laughs> it's more work, but. Um, you spoke a bit about the emergence of performance art in, in these these days in the late 90s in Guatemala, and that there were other artists that were also performing. Could you share? Yeah, so uh, like I said before, I think I come from this generation of uh, artists that were from the post-war. Uh, so we didn't really leave the war itself. Um, but our parents did, and so we will see kind of like the results of that. And I think, uh, and the artists on us were like um, having a lot of, number, number one, we're not happy with the situation at that moment. And also there was no much access to be in galleries or museums. So we took the streets um, to do and protest pretty much with you know our um, our work, and in that instance was uh, one of the artists that actually was started together, and I as a friend of mine, um, and I'm really uh, proud of her work because uh, she came from the same you know background. Um, mainly we didn't go to art school. There was no such a thing in Guatemala. So we started from really uh, coming from the, the problem, right? And to do uh, creative work, uh, we had some sort of investigation about what performance art was and how can we use our bodies to it. So um, I'm gonna talk about Regina Galindo. Um, she is one of the uh, representatives of like Guatemalan performance artists. She has been really successful. Um, I'm gonna read up really quick her bio. Uh, she, um, her work really uh, talks about social political practice. Uh, she strives uh, to acknowledge the 36 years of civil war. Uh, her work has been exhibited globally in museums like MoMA, Guggenheim, Pompidou, uh, she received, she's a recipient of the Golden Lion at the Venice Biennale um, in 2005. Uh, she has represented Guatemala in Documenta 14, which is one of the most prestigious uh, contemporary uh, and conceptual work. 
in Germany. Um, so her work really explores um, the experiences of, pe of people from Guatemala and uh, indigenous people, but also the violence and the power structures around the world. Um, so we're gonna see a video uh, that's called Earth. So you may have seen the sculpture out front. Yes, did everyone see that, the sculpture? When the Mia Delavia was part of the exhibit. And... So in this piece, Regina alludes to the mass graves into uh, which the military threw uh, proposed political. So in this piece, uh, Regina uh, talks about the mass graves that the government uh, did and the genocide where they buried uh, the political opponents and also the indigenous people. Uh, after they took their land, they just buried them to cover the, you know, the, the, the evidence and everything. 
Thank you. So I think maybe we'll, I'd like to share what you have on nostalgia, but is there anything you want to say in between? No, no, I, I would like to know if somebody has some questions, maybe we can do questions. And nostalgia is a piece that I created in London. Um, it was a installation, uh, mainly performatic installation, interactive installation. Uh, and there is a small little replica outside. Um, but the one in London had 60 uh, rain sticks and it was interactive and it has also a video where I collaborated with Joaquin Orellana, one of the uh, best components, uh, composers, <laughs> composers um, from Guatemala. Uh, he also designs his own instruments uh, in this piece of music that played along the whole entire um, time in London was um, mainly inspired by my piece, so we collaborated and um, we created also this video that is the made of bamboo bento, which bamboo means, uh, with bamboo is made of the, you know, the, the, what is made, the, the rain sticks are made of. Um, and so I just would like to just show it and end with that. Would you like to show the, the whole video or like this? I think I think that's a video that is really easy easy to watch. I mean, you can actually stand up and walk around like if you want uh, and see it. But um, it's uh, it was produced in Guatemala. Well, at the same time that we he produced the piece, um, so it's kind of interesting to work with a different generation um, artist as well. Um, I I am personally friends with him. And he he was really happy also to collaborate, so it's really uh, a happy ending. <laughs> and and you said he creates all of his own instruments. Yeah, yeah, he's he's a composer and a creative person, and he's still alive. He's gonna be ninety three this year. So really, really good. Okay. Thank you. Por ahí se ha dicho que es la memoria del alma.
Maybe you could just share with us a quick word on the meaning of this piece that we get to enjoy during the exhibition. Yeah, so nostalgia is a um, is still is a um, as I will say it's a sculpture. It's interactive. It's a sculpture. It's a sculpture, a sculpture <laughs> that um, talks about um, the how we loosen the resource of water. And um, my idea was to bring people in action as a perform also performance kind of to, to, to say that we all are part of uh, losing this resource of water. Um, and so Joaquin came in and got inspired by the, the nostalgia. The nostalgia is this idea of losing um, water right and, and and for me it was like oh, i don't want the water to be just this um memory uh, of you know just to be in our memories uh because rain sticks also um were used by the indigenous people to call the rain in their communities and call the fertility in their communities as a um a ritual right they use it in rituals and in different parts of the of the world Africa and etc. So um, my intention was to connect the, the also the Guatemala because it was representing Guatemala at that time um, and bring is, artists together. Sorry, this is the, the London Design Biennale. Yeah, that's part of the London Design Biennale where like twenty one thousand people touched that instrument. So it was really uh, inspiring and really. Um, it was also at the time where like COVID was, um, but it, everybody was locked, locked down and they opened up London and this exhibition was open. And uh, it was really interesting how people were like, so happy to see other people and like interact with each other. Um, so it had a really positive um, impact. Um, <laughs> Thank you. So now you get to participate in that outside if you'd like to play with the sculpture. Uh, it does work better with two or more. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not. Nice. So what we're going to do, oh, sorry. Yeah. What we're going to do is take a break for 10 minutes. We have some refreshments at the back. And then we are going to get started up here with our live interactive performance. So what we'll go ahead and do is We'll announce when we're ready to start, so about 10 minutes. Thank you so much. Thank you. 